off. Um, Max Schulman, love is a fallacy. And this should be in quotation marks because it is a short story. Somebody who made this PDF messed up. Okay. Cool was I and logical. Keen, calculating, perspicacious, acute, and astute. I was all of these. My brain was as powerful as dynamo, precise as a chemist scales, as penetrating as a scalpel. And think of it, I, only 18. It is not often that one so young has such a giant intellect. Take, for example, P.D. Bellows, my roommate at the university. Same age, same background, but dumb as an ox. A nice enough fellow, you understand, but nothing upstairs. Emotional type, unstable, impressionable. Worst of all, a faddist. Fads, I submit, are the very negation of reason. To be swept up in every new craze that comes along, to surrender oneself to idiocy just because everybody else is doing it, this, to me, is the acme of mindlessness. Not, however, to Petey. One afternoon, I found Petey lying on his bed with an expression of such distress on his face that I immediately diagnosed appendicitis. Don't move, I said. Don't take a laxative. I'll go get a doctor. Raccoon, he mumbled thickly. Raccoon, I said, pausing in my flight. I want a raccoon coat, he wailed. I perceived that his trouble was not physical, but mental. Why do you want a raccoon coat? I should have known it, he cried, pounding his temples. I should have known they'd come back when the Charleston came back. Like a fool, I spent all my money for textbooks, and now I can't get a raccoon coat. Can you mean, I said incredulously, that people are actually wearing raccoon coats again? All the big men on campus are wearing them. Where have you been? In the library, I said, naming a place not frequented by big men on campus. He leaped from the bed and paced the room. I've got to get a raccoon coat, he said passionately. I've got to. Petey, why? Look at it rationally. Raccoon coats are unsanitary. They shed. They smell bad. They weigh too much. They're unsightly. They, you don't understand, he interrupted impatiently. It's the thing to do. Don't you want to be in the swim? No, I said truthfully. Well, I do, he declared. I'd give anything for a raccoon coat. Anything. My brain, that precision instrument, slipped into high gear. Anything, I asked, looking at him narrowly. Anything, he affirmed in ringing tones. I stroked my chin thoughtfully. It so happened that I knew where to get my hands on a raccoon coat. My father had one in his undergrad days, and it lay now in the trunk in the attic back home. It also happened that Petey had something I wanted. He didn't have it exactly, but at least he had first rights on it. I refer to his girl, Polly Espy. I had long coveted Polly Espy. Let me emphasize that my desire for this young woman was not emotional in nature. She was, to be sure, a girl who excited the emotions, but I was not one to let my heart rule my head. I wanted Polly for a shrewdly calculated, entirely cerebral reason. I'm going to pause there because class is starting read on page um the first page i want to go over it so first of all we're hearing this from the point of view of this guy who obviously thinks a lot of himself he thinks he's really smart he's saying um i'm cool and i'm logical and i think things through and i'm smart and i spend time in the library unlike my roommate who is an idiot you know he calls him dumb as an ox, and he says he likes fads fads meaning trends okay like whatever's trendy so his roommate is like I'm such an idiot. I spent money on books when I could have bought a raccoon coat because they came back in style, which by the way, if you don't know that, everything comes back every 20 years. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm having to read this in a mask because um, because I'm at school. So um, so anyway, He's, um, this guy obviously thinks a lot of himself, right? And then it finishes with him saying, um, I'm going to trade my roommate, try to trade my roommate for the raccoon coat for this girl that he has. Okay. So we're picking up right there. This girl, Polly Epsi. Um, 
I was a freshman in law school. In a few years, I would be out in practice. I was well aware of the importance of the right kind of wife in furthering a lawyer's career. The successful lawyers I had observed were, almost without exception, married to beautiful, gracious, intelligent women. With one omission, Polly fitted these specifications perfectly. Sorry, hang on a second. Sorry, you're good. No, you're good. Just keep reading. Um, I'm just recording a video real fast, but Miss Chapman's in there. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, so Polly, he's saying, is everything he wants for a lawyer's wife. He has, she has all of those qualities except for one. Beautiful, she was. She was not yet of pinup proportions, but I felt that time would supply the lack. She already had the makings. Gracious, she was. By gracious, I mean full of graces. She had an erectness of carriage, an ease of bearing, a poise that clearly indicated the best of breeding. At table, her manners were quite exquisite. I had seen her at the cozy campus corner eating the specialty of the house, a sandwich that contained scraps of pot roast, gravy, chopped nuts, and a dipper of sauerkraut without even getting her fingers moist. Okay, so she has good table side manners. She's very polite. Intelligent, she was not. In fact, she veered in the opposite direction, but I believed that under my guidance, she would smarten up. At any rate, it was worth a try. It is, after all, easier to make a beautiful dumb girl smart than to make an ugly smart girl beautiful. Petey, I said, are you in love with polyepsy? SB, sorry, I've been saying it wrong. I think she's a keen kid, he replied, but I don't know if you call it love. Why? Do you, I asked, have any kind of formal arrangement with her? I mean, are you going steady or anything like that? No, we see each other quite a bit, but we both have other dates. Why? Is there, I asked, any other man for whom she has a particular fondness? Not that I know of. Why? I nodded with satisfaction. In other words, if you were out of the picture, the field would be open. Is that right? I guess so. What are you getting at? Nothing, nothing, I said innocently and took my suitcase out of the closet. Where are you going? Asked Petey. Home for the weekend. I threw a few things into the bag. Listen, he said, clutching my arm eagerly. While you're home, you couldn't get some money from your old man, could you? And lend it to me so I could buy a raccoon coat? I may do better than that, I said with a mysterious wink and closed my bag and left. Look, I said to Petey when I got back Monday morning, I threw open the suitcase and revealed the huge, hairy, gamey object that my father had worn in the Stutz Bearcat 1925. Holy Toledo, said Petey reverently. He plunged his hands into the raccoon coat and then his face. You're fine. <laughs> Holy Toledo, he repeated 15 or 20 times. Would you like it? I asked. Oh, yes, he cried, clutching the greasy pelt to him. Then a canny look came into his eyes. Okay, so he just went home and got this raccoon coat, right? I attached a picture on today's lesson. They were super popular in the 1920s. And now we know he's about to ask him for what? I know you can't respond to me, but yes, Polly. That's right. Okay, um, be sure to take your daily quiz today and have a good day.